Sergeant Voltex. Hello, Chief. How are you? <laughs> Carter said you wanted to see me. Yes, I do. Sit down. Thank you. Tex, you did a fine job in rounding up the Barton gang, and you deserve a vacation. Unfortunately, you're the only man that I can trust to handle one of the toughest cases we've ever experienced. So I've got to send you out again. Now that sounds mighty flattering, Chief, but I don't believe I'm that good. I mean every word of it. So it's up to you. Uh, what's it all about? There's a gang operating in the Caballa Bonnet, really gaining control of all the richest mines in the territory. We know what they're doing and how, but we've never been able to get the goods on them. The only way we'll ever get a conviction is to put someone into the gang. And that's where you come in. Where are their headquarters? The Rancho del Valle. When do I start? Right now. You'll have the full cooperation of the local authorities, and I want you to handle the assignment in your own way. All right, Chief. I'll start now. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I may need it. <laughs> <laughs> from town here. To my hacienda, senor sheriff. Well, I'm sorry, John, but he was out riding it, so we kept hurting him this way. Now, being there's only one road in here and no other way out, I think we have him cornered. Who is he? I don't know. What happened? Well, Henderson and Compton were at the Astaire's office, exchanging their gold for currency when this fellow robbed him and shot his way out. Get out there, boys, and lend the sheriff's men a hand. Where does that door lead to? But Sheriff, he's not down here. Then we're searching upstairs. When we get this man, it might clear up the unsolved mine mysteries. Lolita, open the door, please. Please. Padre, what is all this? 
An outlaw is here somewhere. Oh, but surely not in my room. I'm sorry, senorita. But we've got to search every room. It just struck me, Sheriff. This man found a way out. What makes you think that? In the excitement, I never thought of the blind trail he might have been lucky enough to find. Blind trail? Where? See, see, down by the meat house. Give her about it. I forgot, I forgot. The trail is hidden from the meat house, down through the creek bed, and then out through the willows for about a mile and a half. Well, it's too bad you didn't think of that sooner, Evan. He's probably got away. Boy! Yes, yes. Find that trail to the meat house. I'll join you. The trail leads up to the old birdie mine. Then you'll find another trail that takes you out over the flat. Thank you, Evans. Adios. Good luck, senor. Pero que va a pasar ahora? Yo no sé. nenita. Todo ha pasado. Sí, padre. I know how distressing all this has been to you, Lolita. Might I suggest that we go downstairs and have some coffee? Oh, that will be good. No, no, no. Gracias. No coffee. You go, padre. I will rest. I will join you in a few minutes, senor. A little café. I hope you rest well, Lolita. Gracias, senor. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Why, my querida, are you always so cold to senor Evan? It is not that, padre. It is all this excitement. No, no. You do not fool me. You have been like this since Senor Evans came to the rancho. You must not forget my child. He has done much for us. It was his advice, his interest, that has made us rich. I know. I know, Padre. Then, you know, it will give me great happiness if you will be more kind to him. I will try, Padre. But just now, I'm so tired. Buenas noches. Buenas. Que descanse, Lynn. Get something and dress my arm. Don't kneel there. Dress my arm. Thank you. 
Thank you, miss. I'd ask your lady to give me a break. Nothing like a cup of good hot coffee on a night like this. Keep your hands below your belt. Come out of that room where I can get a look at you. Is the coffee still hot? I reckon. get out of the senorita's room. How'd you know I was in there? I saw your boot and spur. Fortunate for you that I did. You mean fortunate for the sheriff? I've jumped through a lot of smoke with the law laying. You know, the surroundings were right nice with the beautiful senorita and all that. Would have been like busting up heaven if anything had happened. Reminds me of a similar situation. Uh, now, she was a blonde. Beautiful blue eyes. You haven't answered my question. How did you get out of that room? <laughs> that, that is easy. Uh, while she was kneeling and, and praying, I slipped out. If I remember right, they, they called you Evans. Right. And lay your spread. How would you like to be declared in on a deal that may mean a fortune? That goes without answering. I gathered from the sheriff that you're a stranger here. I blowed in from a long ways. How much did you get tonight? About 2,000. If you're a stranger here, how did you know that those men were coming into the assay office? I camped right near the strike. Heard them talking. And if the gold was too heavy to carry, I waited for him to come in with it. Anyone get a good look at you? Not good enough to remember. I'll fix it so you can lay low a while. Then I'll have you come out and meet my men. Lolita, the Don's daughter, is of special interest to me. Is that clear? Well, I, I gather you mean... Uh, you don't want no one to cut your fences. You are very, very comprehensive. Uh, 
How my guitar and how peaceful it rides Out on the old prairie setting my horse with my dog by my side Out on the old prairie I'll sing me a song to the stars up above So they'll understand why I'm falling in love And then they will twinkle and act as my guide Out on the old prairie Now that's the kind of singing that sort of picks you up and sets you down peaceful-like. Yeah, say nothing about his running off with the mouth all the time. <laughs> it's confusing to me why the boss took him in. And cut him in. But you ain't running me out for Cherokee. Well, if I was, I'd run him in the chute and brand him. Calls himself Tex. All I've heard is how he can shoot. I this and I that. What happened when I was here and what happened when I was there? Why, if he was to tie into a tenderfoot and had to draw right quick, he'd get all tangled up in the leather. A fellow that can sing that away and play a fiddle. That ain't a fiddle, that's a guitar. Well, whatever it is, it probably sing the tenderfoot to sleep and wouldn't have to draw. Is he going to spend my señorita? No, Who is it that's singing? Oh, just a new man I put on a few days ago, Lolita. She's of a very good voice. Prairie. And there we'll live happy until we are dead Out on the old prairie I yippee yo ho yippee Out on the long prairie The place where a man can sing loudly and strong out on the old prairie. <laughs> well, how'd you like that one, boys? That was pretty. Seems to me you'd look right well in a belly outfit. Fact of the matter is, I can see you in the chorus right now. Please, have him come here and sing for us. Pedro, uh, tell the man who sings to come in here. Muy bien, señor. Oh, me too, no? <laughs> we have little ones too, no? <laughs> the señorita Lolita Valle requested you come sing for her. Oh, thank the señorita. You see, boys, wherever I am, they won't be. <laughs> Four flusher. Say, Cherokee, what did you mean by that belly outfit? I never said nothing about any belly outfit. I said ballet. Well, what's that? Well, I've seen one in Chicago in a show, once with a lot of girls in short skirts, and they sure kicked up their heels right pretty. Well, if what he says is half true, he'd sure enough make a hit in that belly dance, too. Ballet! What's the difference? What's... Ballet, ballet. Dollar, dollar, dollar. My senorita, sweet chiquitita, my beautiful corazón. I'll play my guitar if you'll stay where you are. I'll return and call you my own. My senorita, lovely chiquita, my beautiful corazón. I'm a gay vaquero, vaquero, my lovers is gone. Yesterday, our happy days. I'll not deceive, so please believe. 
Ma señorita, sweet chiquitita, my beautiful corazón. Please do me, but always stay near me, and I'll always call you my own. Gracias. Muy bien, muy bien. I have another number I think you'll like. Some other time, Tex. Oh, no, no. I would like to hear the new number right now. Pardon, Lone Seven. Senor Moses from the bank is here and wishes to see you. Enseguida voy. Uh, perdóname, mijita. Si, padre. I think it would be well, senor, if you come with me for this business. As you wish. You were a fool to come here, senor. You play with your life, senor. To be near you, senorita, I'll take that chance. Morning, boys. Hi, morning, morning boys. boys. We, uh, we wanted to see you last night. I had to go in town on business. What did you want? I was just wondering, boss. Is there anything wrong with me? Well, what do you mean? I'm not so bad looking now, am I? <laughs> You're passable, Cherokee. What's on your mind? I was thinking that maybe I'd do a little courting. Stay away from the women. That's what we all agree to do. What are you hinting at? This overgrown canary that you cut in with us. Well out with the Cherokee. Every chance that he can get, he's with Lolita. Stop right where you are. And if you're a lion, I'll kill you. I know what I'm talking about. I followed him. Speak up, Blackie. Sure enough, boss. Cherokee's telling you straight. A dog don't take up with you unless you're around him a lot. And this particular dog is Lolita's pet. You remember, boss, last spring when that four-flusher Ed Brady crossed up your trails? You're not forgetting that later on the summer range, we picked a fight with him. And when he got ringy and reached for his gun, I naturally had to protect myself, so we left him there. We're riding for the summer range directly. There are times, Cherokee, when you show amazing intelligence. I'll ride out to the summer range and join you boys later. Good morning, gentlemen. Go down and tell the songbird that we're riding. Come on, Tex, we're riding. Hold oh, there, King. How are you, old boy? When the deck is cold, you take the cards they deal you. Where's the deal? When we're at the summer range. Come on, King. I'm dead, 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 dead. 
I must hang until I'm dead. But I killed a man, you know, because he loved her so. Whoop, blast his eyes. Oh, uh, hang it, I must go, Lord, Lord. Oh, uh, hang it, I must go. Oh, uh, hang it, I must go. But I killed a man, you know, because he loved her so. Whoop, blast his eyes. I saw Molly in the crowd, in the crowd. I saw Molly in the crowd, in the crowd. I saw Molly in the crowd. I hollered right out loud, Hey, Molly, ain't you proud? Whoop, flash your ride. Right. No, boys, it would be right peaceful here if this whining and playing suddenly stopped. That reminds me of a hombre I once knew. Always bragging about how tough he was and how fast he was on the draw. He and I had a crush on the same girl. Of course, it is no contest. My singing and good looks sensed it. She fell for me. The showdown came when I was singing a song he didn't like. I told him to go for his gun. I considered everything. He, he was powerful fast, but not fast enough. And you know, boys, I only missed two notes of getting him. But I picked them up before we hit the floor. I think you're the biggest liar that ever lived and you're trying to start something. No, sir. That wasn't my intention. But if you feel that you've been injured, go for your gun. Invitation is still open, gentlemen. I'm a guessing that this setup was on account of Lolita. Is that right, Evans? I knew the Cherokee was following me whenever I met Lolita. I was only trying to be congenial, but when I found out he was spying on me, I poured it on. Now, if it will ease you up, I'm not seeing her anymore. Is that clear? Very clear, Tex. Now, as long as we're having a showdown, here's my hand. When I joined up with this outfit, you told me that if I did, I would have a cut and a fortune. So far, it's just been conversation. Unless you can show me and show me now, I'm adrifting. I think we understand each other pretty well now, Tex. Come on. Let's have a little talk. Cherokee, I'm in a fog trying to figure out where it takes it fit into that belly dance. <laughs> <laughs> and I've discovered that the mine belonging to the two men that you held up that night is the richest diggings in this territory. They're making pretty good headway now, and uh, a little dynamite will stop that progress. Then they'll need money to carry on with. Yeah. Well, well I can handle that all right. 
But would you mind explaining to me how you can turn a deal like that to profit? <laughs> That's very, very easy, Tex. I'll explain the full of it later on. Got enough out of the digging to open that up again. Whoever did this is figuring to get it away from us. Looks that way. The law, my friends, will soon catch up with the ones responsible for the outrages. We were glad of Mr. Evans' suggestion to come to you for help, and we're willing to do business, but we feel somewhat superstitious on the count of other mining claims you financed. Those men passed out. Well, I wouldn't look at it that way if I were you. After all, the sheriff's investigation in all those cases proved beyond a doubt that it was either a drunken brawl or the men got into an argument of some sort and killed each other over their individual interests. Say, Udo? If we understand right, you're financing us straight through. Si, senor. Now, we think it would be fair if we split just three ways. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it can't be that way. After all, it takes quite an amount of capital. And in order to secure Don Esteban against any loss, it will have to be a 50-50 split. That is, 50% uh, to the Don and 50% to you two gentlemen, dividing it amongst yourselves as you wish. Yes, right. What do you say to that, Bill? I'd say let's proceed. There's no difference in this deal than any other time. What are you driving at? Well, boss, if you'll fix the draw so the Tex gets the short straw to handle this deal, and then see that he carries it out, I'll feel more satisfied about him. Very well, then. That's the way it'll be. Zoni, find Tex and bring him in here. Huh? Oh, yeah. Give me a match. This little meeting is called Tex in reference to that mine you took care of so ably for me. This time it's not the mine. It's the two men who own the mine. The most important part of the deal is to eliminate them. Now go ahead. Uh, I'm listening. We're going to draw straws to see who's elected. Well, here they are, boys. Well, I, I guess I'm elected. You'll uh, take one of the boys with you who'll lend you a hand if necessary. How about you, Zoni? It's all right with me. I guess. Dawn tomorrow morning. Now, if this concludes the business, I was working on a little song when Zoni interrupted me. Now, if it's all the same, I, I think I'll go back to that. See, I wrote a song once myself. It was called, It Takes a Spanish Senorita to Make You See, See, Senor. You can try your out on me. <laughs> it's all the same to you. I'll trail him in the morning. As you like, Cherokee.
Riding a new one this morning, eh, Tex? Yeah. Had my eye on this one for a week. Let's roll. Where'd you hear that one, Bill? Oh, down on the show the other night. <laughs> That's a dandy one. <laughs> I took the liberty of inviting my deputy here. She's most welcome. Senor, did you see this? Papers are not here, Don. They've got to make interesting reading, and they'll take a dig at anyone. Now, you know that you enjoy the respect of this community. I'd say the most important thing now is think of nothing else but the birthday fiesta of your beautiful daughter. <laughs> Gracias. 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 Gracias.
Hartley. May I, in my humble way, be one of your many, many well wishes? Gracias, senor. And may I have the honor of the first dance? I am so sorry. I understand. Rosita, por favor. Can you call that? That's a Spanish fandango. So that's the fandango. I was just thinking that uh, Tex ought to that one too. What do you think, Jackie? Finally. Yes, I've seen it. Good. All the riches in the world, senor, is not worth my peace of mind. This is the last business of any kind I will ever do. No matter how much money I can make. I understand. You have my deepest sympathy in this distressing situation.
fellow's good, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. Father, he was angry with me because I joined you in song before my guest. Then why did you do it? To tell you that the sheriff and his men are here watching you. How about Lolita? I told you once before that on account of the storm that they never got close enough to recognize me. Please, when you're sick, please go away. I am so afraid for your life. Last night, I dreamed they catch you and shoot you. If I ride you a long way before I stop, and a long time before I see you again, maybe so long that you'll forget me. Oh, no, no, Pierre, me. In heaven. This is an insult to my house. I am ashamed of you, Lolita. Padre, please, you don't understand. I understand, my child, that your conduct with this man has brought shame and disgrace to my name. Leave my rancho, and say either, now! Nada. Nada, Won't you please go and dance? Please. Oh, please go away. I'm sorry. Shorty and get one of the servants. Rosa is the best one. Be sure that she overhears you tell Shorty that Tex is the man they herded in here the night of the storm. Do you understand? Nothing could be clearer. This pain, always you smile, querida. Oh, no, Padre. Please. No, I... Oh, Padre. Down. Who did this? I don't know, senor. It comes from the back. <laughs> no, Linda. Oh, padre. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Now tell me what you know. Senor Valle, find senorita Lolita in the arms of this vaquero Tex. They have big excitement in the fight and just now, just a little while ago. Are you sure? Si, si, senor, I was there too. I just hear something you should know. Yes, what is it? This vaquero Tex, the witch here, is the old law who was chased to the rancho the night of the storm. Henry. Excuse me. Take some men and cover every possible means of escape. Put two men at the willows down near the meat house. I think we'd better go. All right. 
them guns on quick and get out of here. I'm riding with you. Don't stop to ask questions. Come on. Well, what's the hurry? You're the most arbitrary critter I ever known. Lolita's father's been shot, and they're trying to fix the shooting onto you. Hold steady. You're under arrest. I'm asking for your guns, and you're taking them. Hold on there. Come around in front. I want your back to me when you take those guns. There's another demonstration in this courtroom. I'll order it cleared. Proceed with your examination. Did you see the defendant in your room on the night in question? I object, Your Honor. There is no evidence connecting the defendant as the fugitive who was pursued by the sheriff and his posse on the night in question. If the court please, that is exactly what I am trying to establish. Objection overruled. Proceed. Miss Valle, will you kindly answer the question? Yes, I did. <laughs> On the night of the fiesta, previous to your father being seriously wounded, isn't it a fact that your father berated the defendant and ordered him from the rancho? I object to the question. It is leading and suggestive. Objection overruled. Miss Valle, please answer the question. Only Padre. Padre was angry. Because the gentleman and I were conversing alone. Answer the question, yes or no? Yes. That's all. Take the witness. No questions. We rest our case. I desire to have the defendant take the stand. Do you wish to make the defendant your own witness? I do. Take the stand, please. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Be seated, please. Employed the Rancho Seco? Yes. Who employed you? Mr. Evans, the superintendent. When were you employed? About a month ago. The exact date? October the 30th. Where did you work before this, and for whom? Diamond A, New Mexico. Were you ever at the Rancho Seco before October 30th? Just told you I was hired October the 30th. Isn't it a fact that on the night of October the 18th, you held up and robbed Henderson and Conklin and fled with 2,000? I don't know what you're talking about. And isn't it also a fact that you were closely pursued by the sheriff and his posse and took refuge in the Rancho Seco on the night of the robbery? No, it isn't a fact. Didn't you hear Senorita Valle testify that you took refuge in her room on the night in question? The lady must have been mistaken. Do you also deny the senorita's testimony that you were wounded in the left arm and that she dressed it for you? I told you the lady was mistaken. In the early morning of November the 14th, Henderson and Conklin's mine shaft was destroyed by dynamite. Four days later, November the 18th, Henderson and Conklin were found murdered. I object, Your Honor. 
It is common knowledge that Henderson and Conklin quarreled and shot it out. You're out of order. Objection overruled. Just what do you expect to prove by this line of questioning? I expect to prove that this defendant dynamited that chair and later murdered these two men, then removed the guns from their respective holsters and discharged them in an effort to make it appear that they killed each other over some supposed argument. Proceed. On the night of the fiesta, prior to the attempted murder of Don Ben Valle, where did you go after you had your argument with him? I went to the bunkhouse. How long did you stay there? I never left it. Are you sure you never left it? If I did, I don't remember it. If the court please. I would like permission to relate some of the facts to the defendant for the purpose of refreshing his memory. Proceed. Your Honor, this man knew beyond a doubt of the tragic death of the owners of the many mines which were alleged quarrels. But in reality, they were well-planned murders. This man found out that all of these independent mine owners had been financed by Don Esteban. And furthermore, that at their deaths, the interests of the deceased reverted to the Don, thereby accumulating a fortune. Senorita Valle, with a woman's instinct to protect, shielded him. He took advantage of this and cleverly played his hand until he found that she loved him. But he overplayed his hand the night of the fiesta, was discovered by Don Valle, denounced and ordered from the rancho. Realizing now that the only way to obtain his fortune through the girl was to kill her father. I didn't shoot Don Esteban. And I didn't kill Henderson and Conklin. And I've got a couple of ways to prove it. Would you be so kind then to tell us where these imaginary witnesses are? With pleasure. They're in that room. Sheriff, see who's in that room. Come out, please. No, Mr. Conklin. Look, Conklin. <laughs> I'd ask your lady to give me a break, Lolita. Querido mío. Oh, Padre, say yes. Well, now that reminds me... Of me? Oh. 